All right, so I'm back on chassis rails now with the Mazda. Did a little bit off camera, got my steel delivered. They didn't deliver quite the right size. I wanted 2.5 mil box section, but they've ordered, uh, they delivered two three mil lengths of two mil and one of 1.6, but the two mil's fine actually. So it's probably done me a favor. So what I've done so far, I've got the length to go in here. I'll show you. taken the bottom off for now I need to piece that in which is to go around that chassis leg there but I can't do that yet because that sits there and then got the upright which needs an angle putting on it so that they meet perfectly and then same again there so that's going to be tied from down there, obviously 13 and a half centimetres, the wheelbase thing that's in there. So that'll be 13 and a half millimetres, 13 and a half centimetres back, slid all the way down. But then this is going to be locked in when it's finished, welded all the way down, all the way up the inside of that chassis leg and all the way. I'm going to cut that framework around there for the, um, the subframe mounting drill a hole in there to weld that to and then I'm going to finish it up by welding it against that panel so essentially two of the subframe mounting points and the chassis leg will all be tied in and then for any potential problems in the future we've still got from there which is halfway across the wheel backwards as some form of crumple zone for both obviously the Escort and the Mazda chassis combined what I didn't want to do is have steel going right to the front, right to the back. So if ever it is in an accident, it's going to squash up on a passenger. So I'm trying to be really careful that, which is why I'm keeping the chassis rails in the middle. Then from there onwards, I can do whatever I want, whether it's changing the flute, uh, the, flute the floor to suit the Escort, or I'm really hoping I can keep some, foot, some part of this. But I'll get these, these bends made up. I have got... Um, an angle finder so I've, I know what angle I need to to cut on it I just need to get it done all right so I've got the machine set up at the right angle Right, so this is the end that's going to be going up the chassis leg. I've sort of angled it to what I think roughly it needs to be. So, take that off there. That angle drops down, so drop that in. And it meets up somewhat to the chassis leg I've done. I think I need to just pull that back a bit. Just give me a sec. All right, so I've made the first sort of kit, if you like. And I've got to copy this now for another piece on the other side, but we've got the first piece there, which is mitered down this section. I'll fill in the top. That drops down and is mitered down into that section with that sort of bird's mouthy area. And then we go across down to there. So what I'm going to do, take it apart, copy the pieces to the other side, and then what I'll do is I'll just tack it there and there with some strong tacks. I might even have to seam, seam weld it across there and across there, straighten that, that up a little bit because it still needs, to, still needs to bob over a little bit just to get that squared up. And then I can seam weld all around the back and all that corner that's probably the most important corner and then what I'll do is I'll stitch weld up there both sides up there I can cut that section off then in fact I'll probably cut that off first and weld that to the side actually so I'll just cut that off and weld it to the side of it and the same on this side I'll cut that off there 
and weld it onto the side of the box section which I think will give me a, a stronger a stronger piece I need to weld the subframe mounting onto there and then at the back the other subframe mounting point is down there it's a captive nut I'll just knock that flush at the top anyway so it sits across here and I'll just put a weld across there and maybe just a couple of welds I've left I've left that piece of bracket in because it holds it tight again so I can weld round it I've cut this side out because the mounting point is slightly offset if you look all right so I've changed my mind on building the other side first because I need to do some fiddling around in this corner but I've got that piece running all the way across up the angle so I've got a lot more space now to get the seat in um, I'm running across I've only welded across the top there and across there I still need to seam weld it all the way around and obviously box the top and box the bottom in around there but I'm going to try and pull it out now and see if it holds in one piece hopefully it will tight fit but with a bit of luck it should come out Not many people have done it this way, but that's the, the little V I need to put in there. This side's perfect, and then I'll plate all the way across to that. Hopefully, you can see that. So, I just need to put two little pieces in, plate all the way across with a bend up there, which I can do with the new, new bending machine. I'll just get a couple of tacks down here so this can't move. A couple of tacks on the back first fit it in again and just make sure that it's not moved too much. Uh, let's let me show you where we're up to. The section of chassis legs removed that I need to remove. I bent that piece of chassis leg there, which transitions into the other one down. I'll use the finger sander to sand all that and I'll seam weld that so that that's properly welded together. I've chopped these off a little bit so they're shorter than the other side if you can see them just under there and I will clamp them move the light and I'll clamp them because they've got a little bit of give around the new box section and then we can decide afterwards I'll just seam weld them up to the box section on both sides and um, potentially in fact I will probably do the bottom but I might leave that bit because them chassis legs are definitely staying. I'm just not sure what's going to happen with this. I think I'll probably be keeping it because it's nice and strong and I can do a lap weld onto here, cut off the, the edge, do a lap weld and take that up to the body of the Escort 
and make a nice firm connection before I design whatever floor is going to be in. That will probably get lost that bit and I need to do something up there and then obviously fill that in but I need some back seats to decide on that. Right so just chipping away at bits now so that's seam welded now right inside there so both them them lips are locked together and that's a double skin there now as well. This is cut out, I still need to do that bit and that bit but I'll do them once the box section's in I think and then I'll use a hammer and dolly and just straighten the, the floor up a little bit. I'll try, try in the box section now just make sure it all fits in as, as I've designed and then basically we're moving on to the other side but before I do that I'm, I should be in a position where we can get this section from there all the way through welded seam welded onto the box section and have the box section running all the way across to there all right so i've got the first leg now in place and from underneath the torch this is how how we're looking so it goes from the, the factory leg into mine and then back into the factory leg you can see the the penetration in the welds I did there on the double skin section. What I'm going to do is about there I'm going to put a nut and bolt through so it'll be bolted straight through there and tighten that right down before I weld in all that section then there'll be another weld uh, another bolt there and then exactly 13.5 centimeters across another one another one another one and another one so that then when i stretch it basically i'm just going to be moving it a notch down and rebolting across which will mean hopefully we've got an exact 13.5 centimeter stretch that's the theory anyway and then it should in theory be square as well if I do exactly the same on both sides even if there's a little bit of deviation in where where they sit side to side it should square up and true up Right, so you saw there on the time lapse, I've cleaned up everything, straightened up these edges, still got a little bit of oil canning, but that's because I had to cut into these sections, but I don't want to weld them up, up until I get this in, so we'll brace it all together. I've used the pillar drill to drill the box section, and now I'm going to slot it in for its potentially final time. way around to get it so we're in like that I think I need to grab some washers been deliberating whether to put these in from the top or the bottom because of the style they've got a little cup on the end but I think I might just chop that off actually I thought I'd time lapse that then but it seems I didn't but essentially I've got two bolts in there which you saw I think and then one two three four bolted in there and under the car obviously I need to trim them out because they're going to stick down too low but they're bolted now into the chassis so we're bolted into the chassis rail chassis rail was solid as well so when we split it we're going to slide it down and we're going to be 
exactly 13 and a half centimetres longer on the wheelbase. Uh, as you can see, I'm, I'm still getting used to the settings on the welder, but it's getting a little bit better there. Obviously, I'm, I'm welding two different material thicknesses, but I've seen welded it, which is the way I want to do it. I now need to start moving my way up. I've just tapped in the subframe mount, and I still need to tap this over, but I want to get this firmed up here so that the chassis leg's got no chance of movement. Obviously, we're now tied from there down to there. I do need to get it tacked in. I'm not doing the top here, but I'll do the chassis leg. I'm gonna have to lie down and do that bit. I'll just do the bit I can see, and then we'll weld the other bit from underneath. As you can see there, the penetration that we've got on the welds on the inside, lapping the two together, is absolutely spot on. There's a new chassis leg going to be fitted over the top of the box section, so there's no issue with you being able to tell what's happening underneath either. So what I'll do now, I'll get these clamps off. There's a few holes I need to fill in as well. I think somewhere, might be on the other side, but they could be done like right at the very end and then obviously that's the chassis rail there so we can tack that in as well once all the wheels are off them two holes there can be tacked in as well that bolt i'm gonna leave because that's where i think the abs bolts onto but we can add we can add things in anyway and obviously with it being a box section now i can drill and tap it but i also want to drill a few holes through it and put bungs in so i can wax oil the inside as well Right, so welded up on on the top now i'm getting a bit more used to the welder as well so we've got that there and then obviously i did this cack handed i've not gone down there yet i'm not going to do that for now i just want the top because what i might be doing is cutting a section out of here to put another 50 mil box section underneath where the back seat's going to sit so i can get rid of all this but I don't want to touch that until I've done the other side and we've got some structural integrity back into it and I'll probably run a brace across the chassis legs to the other side as well before I cut that section out just to make sure we get no movement and that will be done I suspect before I even cut the in fact no I'll do that after I've cut the body because that that is so strong it, it holds that tunnel section is holding the back end really nice and square so i'm not like i say i'm not going to bother with that section there this bit i unpicked so it's not bent the chassis rail it's just flowed into the the section this side i left as it was so that's still nice and straight i'll tack onto that bracket or that brace and as i said before i'll just put an l piece in there afterwards and just tack it um, i may seam weld it this i'm just gonna hammer over to meet up to there and I'll seam weld across there and I'm gonna I think I'll leave I'll, I'll probably seam weld all the way down there as well so I'll pinch I'll pinch that up a tiny bit
Right, so here's where I'm up to now. Um, chassis rail's made. And it's fitted in, in place. I've not bolted through yet because I've not done any welding on the inside of the frame. So I still need to do like the inside lips of this. Bring in the pieces. So that needs cutting back a little bit more, ready to weld onto the sides like we did on that side. And I need to weld all the bottom into the chassis legs and cut that section of chassis out from there, the same as we did on that side. And then obviously get it placed in ready for the stretcher part. I then need to decide how I'm gonna take this apart. So whether to just cut straight through and worry about this bit afterwards, or whether to start trying to unpick this corner and obviously that corner. I think I'm gonna go for the latter. I think I'm gonna try and unpick that section. So at least I can make sill sections and then I can put that back in afterwards. What I'll probably do as well, dependent on how it goes, is make a, like a, a reinforcement there. I'm thinking just to give that an extra bit of rigidity. But to be honest, I'm not sure it needs it. I'll, I'll weigh it up in a bit. All right, just for everyone wondering, I've got the car wedged up on that side and not max and floors not level so that I can make sure the chassis is level, which it is. And then I've got some little piece of box section there and there so that I can make sure that the rails that I've put in are in the right position as well, which they are. So just in case you're wondering, I have set everything up so that it's all running in line. So we've got this rail, this is all fully welded in, as you've seen, and bolted. Well, they're welded now, they're not bolted. They are bolted on that side though. That side just wants the bolts put in properly there, and then the temporary ones in there, but I need to cut the chassis leg out, which I'm about to do now. But it's just more to show that it's all square. I need to pinch them in and weld them up like I did on this side. And you can see, with just that little bit of welding there, how solid that is now. So that can now be extended to the cabriolet chassis if it's required, compared to this side, which, as you can see, has got loads of movement. So it's gonna make for a really solid shell. Essentially, I'm turning the back half of the MX-5 into like a ladder chassis. So I will be putting a brace across there and I'll probably be dropping the thin one. Well, the thin one will be in there as well. And uh, either that or I'll do a cross. So I'm not too sure which one yet. Right, so that's it for this video. In the next video, we're going to be splitting it apart. So I'll see you on the next one.